Hello everybody and welcome to Advantage One RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and this is a, I think can legitimately be argued better than new, Jayco J Flight 28 BHS. This is one of the number one best selling floor plans from the number one best selling series of stick and tin travel trailers out there. It has only been used a couple times. I asked the folks, why didn't you want it anymore? It's basically new. They said, here's the thing, we live in the middle of 10 acres of woods. We live camping, basically. We didn't realize that when we got an RV, we were gonna go to an RV park and be next to someone else. And we didn't realize how much we enjoyed not being near other people. So we decided if we're gonna go somewhere, we'll get a cabin up in the mountains and we're just not RV people. It happens, you know, not often, but stuff like that happens. In the meantime, pow! This can qualify for same as new financing. You may have noticed in that pass through all of the accessories, they got all of the things, hitching and everything included to go with this. You get at no additional charge. And because it's used, you're not paying the new RV price tag. But again, it's new enough. It might still qualify for same as new financing pending approval. That's a win-win. And, and I mean, look at this with that awesome, beautiful green backdrop. That looks like a photo straight out of the brochures right there. Oh, man. I, that is beautiful. That's what you want to see. You go camping to get away from it, to get into nature, you know, which is, again, one of the reasons the previous folks swapped this out. Now, I'm just going to blaze through this because this thing's basically brand new. There's no big scary things. Larger 15,000 BTU centralized air conditioner in a taller 6'9 ceiling. All the windows open for airflow. That table free floats around if you want to kick it. Uh, you can kick it down as a coffee table in front of the sofa and leave that open like a nice lounge. You could take it outside for picnic time. You could do a little bit of anything you want to with it. This was made with that lighter, brighter, modern farmhouse decor. And this was the first uh, season that Jayco offered that in the J-Flight series. This is also the first season they offered those nicer, larger, faster cooling 12-volt uh, DC compressor fridges right there, which uh, I I'm such a big fan of those things. There's also nice little details like individual curtains for each bunk so the kids don't have to fight with one another, separate power outlets. Um, theater seating upgrade over here instead of a uh, traditional jackknife sofa. That's, again, something that we do very commonly just down the street. It you also see these handy little uh, removable swivel stands. They actually slot into the cup holders, and then in the cup holders you have another cup holder. It's Cupception, ladies and gentlemen. But there's a neat little trick I figured out a long time ago to get them out of the way, but have them easily accessible. You can just kind of slide them between the paneling and the armrest, and they're there when you need them, gone when you don't. Now, uh, let's start taking a look at all the storage beginning right up here. You'll also notice you've got the blackout kind of pleated shades if you don't want to look at all that beautiful greenery, or you're looking at me without my shirt, sweaty neighbor. <laughs> You've got that big uh, U-Dinette sleeper right there, which is excellent. It gives you uh, additional sleeping space. Uh, this thing could, as it's equipped, sleep, you know, what, five to eight, something like that. And I mean, looking at the kitchen appliances, this stuff is just virtually untouched. It, they, they definitely didn't do any significant cooking in the camper or anything like that. Everything in here looks pretty darn fresh. Bluetooth and DVD stereo inside outside speakers. Also, little Jayco differences. They include an extra HDMI cord so that if you want to add a Blu-ray player or, I don't know, a gaming system if you're so inclined, you can do that. TV straight across from the entertainment, well, TV across from the entertainment center. <sighs> yeah, I said that, didn't I? Anyway, TV across from the theater seat. <laughs> now, it is mounted up high, admittedly. I, I, I want to pose the idea, though, that that is not always the worst thing in a floor plan like this. <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't joking when I said hot and sweaty. With no air conditioning on these things, it's cooking. Anyway, what I was getting at is, yeah, the TV's mounted pretty high up there. This is a bunkhouse, though. On a rainy day, if you are actually inside watching TV, you got all the littles running around in this space down here. And the last thing I think anyone wants is constantly looking around the kids trying to figure out what's on tv because children have this unbelievable ability my daughter weighed uh, weighs a little bit next to nothing she's a, just a little string bean 
but somehow she can block a giant flat screen TV. I don't understand the science behind it. I think it's actually related to the way that like my little 14 pound dog can occupy two thirds of a king size bed, but I digress. My point is most of the time you're gonna be with your family. You might be at the dinette, you might be outside. On a rainy day, if you're gonna be stuck inside, you're gonna be watching a lot of TV. It's a little high, but it's also unobstructed. And I think there's value to that. Now moving into the bedroom here, up on the wall, you see the factory little TV bracket. It's in kind of a funky spot for the bedroom, but the cool thing about this is it can disconnect and you can just take it outside. If you want to leave a screen on it, you can make it float around. You can get a matching bracket to go outside dedicated. Um, remember, we are a little bit taller here in the bedroom and they do keep that overhead cabinetry up there quite a bit. So there's, you could sit right up on the bed and not be knocking your noggin, which is nice. That is a 60 by 80 true queen, by the way. Um, the uh, other thing here is if you notice, there's there's some room between the hanging wardrobe closets and the mattress. That's because Jayco actually has this size that if you wanted to put an RV like 70 by 80 king bed in here, you could. You also see how you've got a full viewing and breeze window over there. And if we take a look down below, you see we've actually got very interesting inside outside partition storage, but even dual interior partitions. And I always kind of thought, that would be a really cool spot to have like a little pet bed or cat litter box, something like that, you know, give you a little kind of peek around here before we hop into the uh, the bathroom space, which is phenomenal. That is one of the very unsung qualities of this floor plan. The bathroom in this thing is terrific. So like it's got a, you know, inward facing actual storage medicine cabinet, large adult size sink, which is great. And uh, it's pretty darn fluffy friendly. There's a lot of room around that porcelain stool. But talking about fluffy friendly, how about the, the, the biggest shower you've ever seen in a little potentially half ton towable bunkhouse camper? It really depends on the half ton. And remember, with a taller ceiling, you got all kinds of room in here. But if we close that slide out, you see that you're not really able to get back to the living room from the bedroom space. Thankfully, with the two entry doors, it's not necessarily that big of a deal. You can just hop out of door one and go into door two effectively. Um, the uh, other things I wanted to show you here is not just the fact that yes, you can walk right in, you can maintain access to the bathroom when you're in travel mode, but you've also got that folding cargo bunk space right here, which in travel mode, I think is very handy because this gives you a great spot right here for things like bicycles. That is one of the best easy, quick access bike garages I think I've seen. And then you see right here where they really nailed this one is you can totally get to the refrigerator. You can get to things like your drawer space. So if you do need to do an overnighter uh, in a parking lot, you can't deploy the slide out, but you got to feed the kids in the morning or something like that. You can get them a bowl of cereal. You can get them rolling. Or if you're like me, you just feed a McDonald's and head on your merry way. Truth be told, I'm eating my own McDonald's and, um, I mean, if, but if we're being honest here, it's because I want to go to McDonald's and I don't want a bowl of cereal. So I'm like, hey, kids, you want McDonald's? And they're like, yes, of course, of course I do. And then my wife's like, and I'm like, I've been around this thing a few times now. I, I don't see where like they bumped it into a tree or a barn or a, a post at the gas station in the inside the cat didn't sharpen their claws i don't think they had a cat i'm just saying it, there's not like damage there's not dings bangs and blemishes it looks fantastic this has an extended diamond plate on the front too that's one of the cool things on j flights they put a much larger diamond plate on here for more coverage uh 30 pound tanks instead of 20s power tongue jack doing the heavy lifting for us and speaking of lifting got ourselves that load distributing hitch system right there all included with it along with just a whole slew of accessories like i said they bought the RV, they bought all the things to go with it. They went out a couple times and went, huh, we actually prefer solitude and, and uh, serenity a little bit more than we appreciate neighbors. And to be fair, I think that's actually kind of the entire uh, plot of the Grinch, because if we're really calling a spade a spade, the Grinch didn't hate Christmas, the Grinch hated people. <laughs> There's a difference there, anyway. 
<laughs> uh, up under that kitchen window, you've got yourself uh, TV hookups. Goodyear Endurance Radial Standard on these. These are the original factory tires, and they're some of the very best in the business. Rated for up to 87 miles per hour. This looks to have been built with the optional stable steps. This was actually put together very similar to how uh, they would do them just down the street at Halet RV. So pretty darn familiar with this. The uh, little mini kitchenette. Jayco does a very good job because the thing is, that's not what I call the dog dish dump sink. That is a real sink with a real drain next to that little uh, cooktop over there. And uh, of course, down below, since you have a cooktop, you've got your little propane cooker hooker. And that right there is a, well, I asked Siri uh, the answer for this and she's like, it's a big honking awning. And I'm like, wow, okay, well, Siri gets it, cool. This also has J-Smart lighting. If you don't know what that is, easiest way I can describe it is turn signal safety lighting and backup lighting. If you flip on your left-hand turn signal, all of the lights down the side of the RV and extra uh, marker lights at the top corners will blink with that signal to let other people know what's going on. A couple things here before we hop up and take a peek at that uh, fully walkable plywood decked roof, mind you. Black flush, outside utility shower, and this was built with the J-Flight thermal package which starts with an enclosed underbelly. It is then forced air heated. It has extra insulation added all the way around the RV. There's a radiant barrier layer through the slide floor. This RV has not been tested to zero degrees. It's not what people might refer to as four seasons. I think it actually is capable, but Jayco's never done the testing. It is hands down though, the best insulated trailer on the market in the stick and tin class, bar none. Now other than a little storage desk, everything up here looks pretty factory. The RV's not old enough to have needed sealants changed or anything like that. The other thing I want to show you up here is this is factory solar ready. It has both a simple side mount solar prep plug up on the tongue and you got yourself the roof plug right here. The charge controller, by the way, would be mounted uh, up in the bedroom. There's a little sticker on the wall if you back the video up. So thank you for joining us. Appreciate it if you took a moment to subscribe. If you haven't before, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about this one, good, bad, ugly, or otherwise, or anything we can do for you in terms of questions or just something else I can do to, to help you along in our general presentations. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.